Good morning. Welcome to the Hermitage Worship Service. Today is Sunday, May the 24th. I am Reverend Kathy Howell and I'm your chaplain. Today we will celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord into Heaven. I know we're all separate and keeping safe at this time. I'm recording this from home. And also our pianist, Betty Cooley, she records a prelude for us each week. Let us prepare ourselves, our hearts, and our minds for worship as we listen to Betty play our prelude, Hail the Day. Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Kathy Howell. I'm the chaplain here at the Hermitage. I want to welcome you to our worship service on this Sunday, May 24th. It is today we will celebrate the ascension of our Lord, of our risen Lord Jesus Christ into heaven. Let us begin with our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Worship comes from, the, from Paul's letter to the Colossians. 
on chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And he tells the Christians of Colossae, Therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, we must clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another. If any of us have a grievance against, another, against someone, we are to forgive as the Lord forgave us. And over all these virtues, let us clothe ourselves in love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Amen. This is the time we share our joys and concerns. Of course, the ongoing uh, COVID-19 crisis is, a con is one of the major concerns of the world at this time. So we're going to remember everyone in that. We also want to remember, pray for protection and healing and comfort for all those here at the Hermitage, for our loved ones and families, for all those who, uh, who are on the front lines. We're going to pray especially for those who are challenged by the restrictions. And as many of the restrictions are eased in places throughout the nation and people begin to go out in public once more, we want to pray that um, a second wave of problems will be avoided. We want to also pray for those of our own community who are in the hospital. Uh, Nancy Rosenberg, uh, Gertrude Colgrove, she had been doing better, but unfortunately Gertrude had a little setback, and so she's back in the hospital. Betsy Crosby, who lives in health care, and Dorothy Ford. Also, one of uh, the residents of the healthcare, of health care passed away in the hospital uh, this, uh, on Friday. Her name was B. Larson. We want to keep uh, B's family in our prayers. Let us pray. Lord God, there are many blessings we have in our lives. We thank you for the way that, that we have food on our table and a roof over our heads and a place where people care and are concerned about us. We ask you, Lord, to keep us safe in this time of, of, of pandemic. Protect all those who put their lives at risk to care for others. We want to pray especially for Nancy and Gertrude and Betsy and Dorothy who are all in the hospital. And we pray for comfort for the family of B and for the families of all those who grieve, particularly those who grieve the loss of their loved ones through this current pan pandemic. We also want to pray for victims of, of the flood that's happening in the Midwest. We want to pray for all those who face the challenges of the, econ of the depressed economy and worry about food and about whether they'll have a job and a way to support themselves and their loved ones. We ask you, Lord, to hasten the, the development of better treatments and a vaccine. We pray, Lord, that you will also keep us safe and let us use wisdom and judgment as we begin to try to resume a normal life. I ask you, Lord, to, to let, help us open our hearts in this time. I thank you for the outpouring of love that is so abundant among all your people that we have seen repeated time and time again by people's persons of all faith and some that profess none, yet they have found a way to reach outside themselves and to help others in whatever way they can. Help us to do what we can to nurture our, the good within ourselves and the good within other people. 
Help us to see the world through your eyes. To see, to look upon one another with love. And to know the sureness of our place in heaven with you through faith. The heaven that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ascended to. And the fullness of your love for us all. We ask this as we pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn will be Open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I might see. Glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key. That shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Stay Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, starting with chapter 44. Then Jesus said to them, These are words that I spoke while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that the repentance of 
and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending you what the Father promised. So stay here in this city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then he led them as far out as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I enjoy jigsaw puzzles. It's probably no surprise you might have caught me once or twice working on a jigsaw puzzle. But it's a good way to socialize, I think. But it's, I used to spend time doing jigsaw puzzles with my sister Cindy, with my godmother, my aunt uh, Phyllis, who uh, really always enjoyed them. I have met lots of good times in doing jigsaw puzzles, and I like the challenge. But you know, a jigsaw puzzle would be, you know, if, if you had all the pieces, it would be awfully hard to put, put it together without being able to see the picture, the big picture that comes on the cover. You know, that's kind of what everybody who had tried to interpret all the prophecies the law and the, the, uh, the law and Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, all the prophecies that they thought might, that they thought applied to the coming Messiah. They had these different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, but they didn't even know which ones actually fit the puzzle and which ones were predictions about the, the Messiah and which ones weren't really. Some of them they completely overlooked. It was like they had a few, they had a whole bunch of pieces and they were trying to figure out a picture. And they were trying very hard to study the, the law and the prophets and the Psalms to figure out when the Messiah would come and what exactly would happen. Well, on that last day that Jesus was on the face of the earth, in that glorified body which was given to him upon his resurrection from the dead when he had physical feet that touched the ground though in a glorified and spectacular way and could interact with the disciples and was able to eat and talk and drink in a way that was tangible and real to them they could touch him On that last day, he made sure that they understood how his life and teachings and his death and resurrection had all fulfilled what was written in the Law and the Prophets. Do you remember back on the road uh, to Emmaus when he walked along on that first day of his resurrection with two disciples? And he opened the scriptures to them. That means he explained how all of those scriptures in the Old Testament and in the, had applied to him and how the life of Jesus had fulfilled them all. I think that's why you find so often in the writings of the Gospels and in the, uh, and in the letters, the, the epistles, of the New Testament, you find them saying so often how this scripture was fulfilled or that scripture was fulfilled. What Jesus was asking them to do was to see with new eyes. To real, now that they had seen his life, they had that picture that made so much help to me on the front of a jigsaw puzzle box. They were able to see how they might fit together. You know, for example, before Jesus' ascension, before Jesus' resurrection, 
before he began to open their mind to the scriptures, people admired uh, the suffering servant of Isaiah. You know, Isaiah 53, a servant who was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him the, was the punishment that made us whole, and by his stripes we were healed. Though people admired someone who would suffer that much, they couldn't, prior to Jesus' life, imagine that the Messiah would suffer, that the Messiah would, that this scripture applied to the Messiah. No, this scripture applied to some noble person who served others and gave their life or suffered for, for the sake of others. But now there were over a hundred scriptures that they could see with new eyes. It was the same old words, but they had new meaning. They had thought a Messiah would give them a powerful earthly kingdom. No, but the Messiah had come to give them eternal life. They had hoped for someone who would defeat the Romans, an earthly king. Instead, they had the divine Son of God who defeated sin and death and restored all of creation and opened the gates of heaven to all those who had faith. Must have been pretty amazing. I know it is amazing when all the pieces come together, when everything falls into place. I know my son Michael. From a very early age, I knew something was wrong. From age four, he had problems that I just couldn't explain. Many things had happened and I, I was aware of it and I took him to psychiatrist, I, I, I took him to doctors, I had neurological studies done, I, so many, many things over the course of the years. He was diagnosed with ADD, he was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, he had a learning disability, and those explained little pieces, but it never explained the whole. And then when he was 17, the psychiatrist said, I really believe that Michael has autism, that he has Asperger's, which is a form of autism. And Michael looked and he handed me a list of the things that were the symptoms of it. Now remember when I when I shared it with Michael, Michael read it and he said, wow mom, this is me. Do you know what this means? I'm not just weird. I really have something wrong with me. And for Michael that was a great relief. Now all the pieces of the puzzle fell into place and he saw a hole that made sense saw a complete picture and he could deal with things now with a new perspective. He could see the world now with new eyes, understanding the problems and the influence of his medical condition. As Christians were called to see the world through post-resurrection eyes and that changes everything. Of course, the ability to see with new eyes doesn't always come the first time we hear the story of Jesus. For us, it comes when we truly believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior. It comes when we truly open our hearts to God and place Him first in our life. Ask for forgiveness for the wrongs we may have done in the past to seek a live a lot to live a life closer and more united with him but even when we see with new eyes we still sometimes feel like people trying to work a jigsaw puzzle and don't know exactly how all the pieces fit We know how the scriptures all apply to Jesus now. And we are assured of the ultimate victory of good over evil. The ultimate victory of God over all the sin 
and corruption and destruction of the world. And though we're assured of that, it's still hard for us to see where each piece fits. We still have a little bit of a challenge. But the advantage is now we have a glimpse of the big picture. We can see the world through new eyes. Look for those signs of God working in our lives and in creation around us. And know the truth that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And through faith, it's an eternal life that waits for us all. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come again to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. It's been wonderful to talk, to, to worship with you today. I look forward to the time when we can, we can once again be with one another and worship physic in the same physical space together. But whether that's tomorrow or at some time in the future, it doesn't matter in the sense that true worshipers worship. The true followers of God, as Jesus told the Samaritan woman, it won't matter whether they worship here or worship there on the temple or on the mountain, he told her. They will worship in spirit and in truth. So, I am going to play our closing hymn right after the benediction. After this tape, after this video ends, it'll be my uh, my closing uh, hymn. Uh, it's our today as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord into heaven. I I'd like to sh share the hymn because He lives with you. It's one of my favorite hymns, of course. I've got lots of favorites, I guess, but because He lives is particularly wonderful. However, I found a video that that kind of touched me in a new and a fresh way. It comes to us from Africa, and I hope you will find that it touches you too. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.